Thank you. Thank you very much. The next uh, presentation will be um, uh, Zheng Yu Li from KIT, and he's going to speak about cathode design for high energy, fast kinetic magnesium storage. Zheng Yu, the floor is yours. Yeah, sorry, I just have to mute myself, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Christian. Uh, can you hear me, first of all? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you, Christian, for your introduction. And also thank Max for your invitation. My name is Chen Yu Li, and I'm from High Post Institute, Wool. So, um, Previously, I mean, the previous two talks are all about the magnesium cathode. And following their talks, I will also give our recent progress on the development of magnesium cathode. So a brief introduction to the magnesium batteries. I think most of the points you already know that uh, the rechargeable batteries that utilize in this magnesium anode could have the potential to provide high energy density and could be sustainable and uh, be cost efficient because we are using um, more and more this abundance materials or elements in this system. And also during the past two decades, we have seen a lot of uh, progress in the field of magnesium electrolytes and uh, actually uh, several uh, successful candidates um, uh, or let's say successful magnesium electrolyte systems have been built up. Um, for example, this uh, green nut based APC electrolyte, which is widely used in the community, and this um, non nucleophilic electrolyte, which is compatible with the uh, sulfur cathode and also the organic cathode. And, uh, and also this uh, chlorine free magnesium electrolyte with a, a broad electrochemical window. And this allow us to just to couple the metallic magnesium anode with a high voltage cathode material. So there's no doubt that the electrolyte has been a um, most advanced part in the magnesium battery technology. And uh, in comparison, the cathode development is uh, still in a very early stage, I would say. Um, the fact is that uh, even back in 2000, we already have our first benchmark cathode, the Schaeffer phase molybdenum sulfide, uh, as reported by Doron Albach's group. But uh, 20 years later, it's still the only benchmark cathode that, that we are using. So we are str still struggling to find a proper cathode which can like reversibly insert and deinsert magnesium at room temperature, I would say. And um, at this stage, uh, the cathode has been the uh, bottleneck issue for realization of a practical magnesium battery. So, uh, as presented previously, there are a lot of uh, issues related to magnesium ion mobility. And uh, the reason is simple, we have a bivalence shuttling ions, the magnesium ions. The fact is that if we want to make use of the high charge density to get a high energy density, we also suffer from the um, strong interaction between the shuttling ion and the cathode. So, it's um, particularly prominent in case of oxide, where we have this trapping effect of the anion framework. And also, um, this leads to a very sluggish diffusion kinetics. So previously, um, SETAS group has calculated the ion mobility in some typical oxide materials or oxide uh, uh, host for lithium ion batteries. And uh, the result is like um, the migration energy barrier for magnesium is always much higher than that of the lithium. And if we look at the value, we see, sorry, um, all of them are actually um, even much beyond the estimated energy limit of um, uh, for the eye mobility in 
and nano-sized particles. So with this theoretic prediction, I would see it's um, not surprising that we um, normally receive, um, uh, I mean, in a practical cases, it's, uh, we have this slope behavior with fast potential drop in the voltage profile. As this figure has shown by Brian before, and we see that even at uh, elevated temperature, the magnesium storage in uh, spinal uh, oxide is still very limited. And this usually leads to a very small capacity with limited cycle life. So to reduce the migration energy barrier strategies that needs to be developed in order to uh, uh, weak the interaction between magnesium ion and the cathode host. And for example, we could just move from oxide to sulfide. I mean, oxide has a relatively high discharge voltage, but I mean, uh, the first step we could also think about sulfide because sulfur is um, less polarized than oxygen. And another strategy is, of course, to make an expanded interlayer structure so that we have uh, relatively larger ion diffusion terminals. Also, we could think about reducing the charge density of the shuttling ions by establishing the um, some novel intercalation chemistries, for example, using the solvated magnesium ion solution or the magnesium chloride ion as a whole for intercalation. And these three strategies are actually, they are pointing to one direction, that is we need to have a certain flexibility of the structure uh, so that we could have uh, good enough kinetics for magnesium mobility. Um, but I would see, as um, Brian um, pointed out before, that magnesium mobility is not the primary limit or might not be the only limit for magnesium and uh, uh, reversible magnesium storage. And in fact, um, neutralizing the double charge of the magnesium ion is also not straightforward as we expected. And uh, this is uh, especially if we look at this transition mental uh, compound, um, if there's one magnesium just come in, we have to uh, change the oxidation state of the transition mental by two electrons or by two. So we need to know that the, not all the transition mental could afford um, like the change of the oxidation state by two. And um, also, if they have the capability, there will be definitely a drastic change of the ion size and coordination. Here I show you an example of the manganese. So we see that the manganese 2 plus has a ionic radius, which is 50%, almost 50% larger than the manganese 4 plus. If we consider both of them are in the octahedral coordination environment. And this drastic change will, um, of course, lead to a deformation of the crystal structure, which is unfavorable for further cycling. So one solution we are thinking is to um, like share the um, uh, double charge or even multi-charge over um, like several atoms, which means um, we want to activate multi-redox center rather than a single redox center, as in this case. Um, but to do so, we also need to make sure that the redox of these atoms, they are happening at the same voltage. And this means we need a cathode with a delocalized electronic structure. And um, this is, has been reported previously, and even in the benchmark castle, the Sheffer phase. And if we look at the structure, so the uh, purple balls represent the uh, molybdenum atoms, and we see that uh, six atoms are forming a uh, 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 hexagonal ring, and they just share four electron transfer during magnesium insertion. So on average, each atom only takes about uh, two thirds of an electron. 
So that's why in uh, uh, battery performance, it shows a very long-term cycling. And um, what I want to also point out is that um, with this uh, delocalized electronic configuration, even the strong magnesium oxygen interaction can be somehow um, mitigated. And um, examples could be like in the polymer cases. So here I show you um, the polyanthron quinone structure. And basically, we have um, a conjugated um, uh, structure over the stru uh, over the polymer, uh, the, the um, molecular chains. And um, in this case, we could see that um, the battery could deliver a very nice platoon with um, a very good cycling stability. So here I show you up to 100 cycles in the publication. And, um, um, with these two points, we are starting to design a um, uh, high performance magnesium cathode. And uh, of course, we would uh, consider both the graphic structure and also the electronic configurations. From the structure point of view, I mean the crystal structure point of view, we we were studying the 2D layer structure, uh, but to render more flexibility, we have shifted to the um, molecular chain-like structure. This is kind of quasi one-dimensional structure. And um, on the other hand, in order to enable this multi-electron transfer, we are thinking to involve anions to uh, this redox process so that we have this electron cloud um, over the whole clusters, uh, which could just take the multi um, uh, electron transfer. So that's why we choose the vanadium tetrasulfide as a model material and study the magnesium storage capability in this cathode. And the reason is like the um, atomic energy level of vanadium and sulfur are close to each other. So basically, to prepare the BS4 cathode, we use a hydrothermal approach and have applied the graphene oxide as a substrate to let the BS4 uh, nucleation. And um, in the uh, SEM image, we see like uh, the needle-like structure, which indicates the quasi 1D um, a structure of these molecules or these materials. And this corresponding uh, EDX spectrum, we have estimated the atomic ratio between sulfur and vanadium, and which is close to 4 to 1, the stoichiometric ratio of BS4. The XRD pattern also revealed that we have a um, uh, patronite BS4 structure. And uh, the interlayer chain distance is 5.8 Armstrong. So then we have studied the magnesium storage in this BS4 cathode. So this is like a typical uh, discharge and charge plateau, uh, voltage uh, profiles. And um, also, we compared with the VS2 cathode, which was also prepared using a similar hydrothermal approach. And this is very clear that we have a much uh, prominent uh, discharge platooms and a significant increase of this capacity. So the VS2, VS4 based um, uh, cell, we also run it at a different uh, current rate and uh, even at uh, current of 500 milliampere per gram with moderate uh, capacity retention. In the cycling performance, we see the charge discharge curves almost overlap after the initial cycle, and this indicate a good reversibility. And also, the cell could deliver a discharge capacity of around 350 milliampere per gram, and this corresponds to two, uh, like 1.1 magnesium or 2.2 electron transfer. So with this 
um, high capacity and also the nice platforms, we could reach a specific energy of 300 watt hour per kilo at the material level. So here we also compared the capacity and voltage of our VS4 castle with other castle that was, has reported. And uh, from this figure, we see that VS4 already represent the state of the art castle for magnesium battery in terms of both specific energy and specific power. And we also learned that um, further increase in the specific energy is possible if we like uh, change the magnesium anode with a calcium anode because calcium is also like a divalent um, metal anode and the respective um, cell could deliver um, energy density, no, specific energy of um, 500 watt hour per kilo in a material level. And this is simply because we have a, a much higher uh, voltage than in case of the magnesium. And uh, also the demonstration of this um, calcium batteries uh, also indicate that uh, the strategies uh, that we have applied here could also be valid for other um, divalent ion storage or even multivalent ion storage, so which is quite promising. Then we further studied the magnetic storage mechanism in the VS4 cathode. So basically we have used this um, XPS spectrum just to track the change of the excitation state of vanadium and sulfur. So we have taken the electrode at the pristine state and also at the discharge to 1.3, 0 0.8, and a fully discharged and fully charged state. So in the sulfur spectrum, um, we see that during magnesium insertion, we have um, peak shift from um, the original state, uh, the red one, to the blue one, or let's say we have new doublets are formation during the uh, insertion of magnesium. And this indicates that we have a transformation from disulfide to sulfide. And in the meanwhile, in the vanadium spectrum, we see um, um, like, uh, like a simultaneous change of the uh, vanadium oxidation state to a higher uh, uh, oxidation state. So the peak shift is actually towards a higher binding energy. And other than that, um, we didn't find any peaks that related to long chain polysulfide or some elemental sulfur or uh, metallic vanadium, which means we don't have this sample conversion reaction taking place during the process. So the question is that why we have the oxidation state change in both vanadium and sulfur, and even the vanadium uh, has been oxi oxidized during magnesium insertion. And this could be explained from the energy diagram of VS4. And we see that here uh, the vanadium 3D orbitals is penetrating through the sulfur orbitals. With the overlap of these orbitals, we could have the like some intramolecular um, electron exchange so that during magnesium insertion, all the electrons from the, uh, the out circuit and also from the vanadium has been moved to uh, or jumped to the sulfur and 3P orbitals uh, because the new formed uh, sulfur orbitals is um, lying below the vanadium one. And that's why the vanadium has been oxidized during the process. And with the synergetic cationic and anionic redox, we could achieve theoretically 1.5 magnesium per VS4 structure. And this mechanism is also confirmed by a DFT calculation, where we have seen the charge allocation is mostly on the sulfur dimers. We have also calculated the ion diffusion pathways in this VS4 structure, 
And here we have considered two scenarios. So the first one is like we uh, assume that the magnesium is just diffusion uh, in the terminals that is in uh, parallel to this VS4 molecular chains. And this result uh, in a very uh, relatively high energy barrier. In another case, the magnesium could also jump from one disulfur or sulfur dimers to the next. So in this case, we have a much reduced uh, energy barrier compared to the first cases. So this result is quite interesting. And also it reminds us of uh, the iron hopping in polymer. We, if we look at the structure, we see that VS4 is also um, kind of like a polymer structure. It has a molecular chain structure. And uh, that's why it might also have the same hopping mechanism as in the polymer cases. But in case of the polymer, because of its um, uh, even much flexible, much more flexible than the VS4 structure, uh, then this also allows us to have this even interchain hopping or even with uh, ion cluster hopping together with some uh, anions or it's some clusters. So this is quite interesting. So to sum up, I would say that um, first of all, we have uh, proposed to consider the local charge balancing during magnesium insertion. And in this regard, we believe that multi-electron redox might fit better to the multivalent ion storage. And uh, this could also be a design principle for or magnesium cathode or even other multivalent cathode. And as we presented before, the cathode with delocalized um, electronic structure will be more interesting and more promising for eye mobility. And um, we know that the cas or the delocalized electronic structure could be easily achieved in the organic cases where we always are, it's easy to have this conjugated uh, structure. But in case of inorganic material, we have to think of to uh, engineer the, uh, the, the band structure of the material so that we have some um, overlap of the orbitals between the cations and anions. And this might be a solution for a more dense structure compared to the organic cases. Um, at last, uh, we also learned from the polymer that um, the 1D um, molecular chain structure might render more structural flexibility so that um, uh, will, the, the, the battery system or the uh, eye mobility will benefit from this structure. So this could be also something we need to consider when we design uh, uh, or further design a magnesium cathode. So at last, I would like to thank um, the um, or acknowledge the uh, financial support from uh, Polis, from the eMagic, and also the Maximal, and also the uh, colleagues and partners that um, contribute to this work and giving me firmly support. And with that, I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, thank also, you. Thank you for staying so nicely on time. Um, we have uh, plenty of time for questions, so um, to the audience, maybe you have joined later, if you have a question, please post your question in the question and answer section. There's um, an option if you go to the WebEx controls in your conference window, you can open the question and answer section and please post your um, questions um, to Jenny there. If you are on the panel and you have a question, you may also unmute your microphone and just ask your question directly. Um, Max, I'll hand over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Chen Yu. Um, I have two questions at the moment here coming in from Abraham. Uh, the charge capacity for VS4 is larger in all cycles, question mark. Why? How can cell capacity be retained with this large irreversibility? Reminds me a little bit to the case that we have uh, in, in lithium sulfur batteries, for example. So how this is possible? 
Yes, this is actually a good question. We are, um, as we have presented in the publication, but I didn't show you here, is uh, like uh, we always have a relatively low climbing efficiency, or we have uh, like more charge than a discharge. Um, so the reason could be, I mean, um, on the other hand, we also find that, so theoretically, we could achieve 1.5 magnesium insertion. And uh, in the real case, we this only corresponds to like around one or one to one magnesium insertion. Um, so that's why I'm also wondering whether we have make full use of the cathode materials here. Um, so the overcharge here showing showing in the uh, charge discharge platform, I was thinking maybe from some side reaction of the cathode, for example, when we, we we have the breakdown of the sulfur sulfur um, uh, bounds, and this might not be completely or hundred percent reversible, so that we so that we are losing some kind of um, uh, 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 the capacity, and also um, this will somehow lead to some. Um, um, Maybe there will be like small amount of um, magnesium sulfide formation, which is just detached from the structure. And um, as you mentioned, Max, it's uh, in case of the lithium sulfur or magnesium sulfur cases, we have this overcharge. So it might be similar at that one also. Yeah, of course, it's probably a different mechanism. Um, there's another question from Gregorio Ortiz. Uh, nice work. I think you avoid at any moment the presence of oxygen, right? Uh, yeah. The mechanism of reaction is interesting. Could you explain why the OCV of the cell is one volt? And why is it so different to the 2.4 volts as theoretically expected? Uh, I don't understand so why we have uh, 2.4 volts from theoretic calculation. Um, but basically, this um, uh, one volt, so that initial discharge was, we believe that it's coming from the magnesium anode side. This is also the case in the magnesium sulfur case and other, uh, in other like insertion cases we have studied. We always have some uh, activation cycle in the beginning. That's why we have some uh, voltage drop or voltage, which is uh, lower than the uh, the rest of the cycles. So I think it's mostly contribute uh, from the magnesium side. Okay. Um, uh, I have a question here, which was, I think, um, asked to the host only, so probably only I see from Samuel Bertolini. Um, okay. he writes, nice presentation in the VS4 cathode.